Today I'm going to show you five little known tips and tricks for the EM10 Mark II that will help you take better pictures, uh, maneuver around some of the settings a little easier, and then also how to double your battery life. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is the Function 2 button. The Function 2 button, as you probably know, is by default the Highlight and Shadow button. So if I just tap the Function 2 button now, uh, you can see the Highlight and Shadow menu come up. And we just rotate the front and rear dials accordingly. Uh, however, the default setting for the Function 2 button is actually not Highlight Shadow. The default setting is multifunction. It just happens to be on the Highlight Shadow mode right now. So to change the function, because the Function 2 button can do more than highlight and shadow in this mode, is you hold the Function 2 button down, and then you just simply rotate the rear dial. And you'll see that the first setting there by default is the highlight shadow, which we just saw. However, if I rotate the rear dial again, I go into Color Creator mode. And this is the only way I know how to get into Color Creator mode. Uh, so if you tap the shutter uh, Function 2 button now, you'll see that the Color Creator dial comes up. Now another function uh, of the Function 2 button is if I hold it down, rotate the rear dial, I can go to ISO and White Balance. So what this is going to do is it's going to uh, change the, the uh, function of the front and rear dials or what they do. So, uh, let me go into the Super Control Panel. I need to take it out of Color Creator, and we'll put it back to Natural. But, as usual, if I rotate the front and rear dials, I have Aperture on the rear dial, and I have Exposure Comp on the front dial, if, if you're an Aperture Priority, for example. But, if I tap the Function 2 button now, you'll see the ISO and White Balance menus pop up. So, by rotating the front dial, I can go back into Auto ISO, or I can change it quickly to ISO 800, and then I can change the white balance as well to anything that I want. And then, once I'm done, the, the dials go back to their default settings, exposure compensation and aperture in this case. Now, let's look at the next one here. We have Magnify. So, if I tap the Function 2 button now, you'll see a little green box pop up. And if I tap the Function button again, it'll zoom in where that green box was. And then I can zoom in and out using either one of the dials here. And this, this is handy if you want to make sure you've locked in on focus or you're manually focusing, etc. There's a lot of uses for this. And then when I back out, you can see the green box is a little bigger. That's because I've magnified only 3x at this point. So it's showing you what it's going to magnify on. And to get out of this mode, I just click the OK button. And then finally is the uh, image aspect ratio. And this is something I don't use. But this changes the image aspect ratio of the JPEG image. The raw image will still be the full you know, 4 by 3 image. But the JPEG will now be uh, taken in the image aspect ratio you set here. But this is a function that I don't use a lot. Because another neat thing you can do is you can change what the multifunctions are. So I can add or subtract functions to the multifunction menu. It's a little bit limited on the EM10 Mark II, but I think my EM1 Mark II has additional functions I can add and subtract. But we'll just talk about this camera for today. And the way you do that, uh, the way you add and subtract things is you go into the menu, custom menu, and you want to go into menu D, and then go all the way down until you see where it says multifunction settings right here. Click OK. And you can see I can reverse the direction of the ISO and white balance dials. But let's get rid of image aspect. I can also add the uh, simulated optical viewfinder to the menu. But um, I like these three, personally. These are the three that I normally have set up for the multifunction button on Function 2. The next thing I want to show you is how to get the maximum quality JPEG out of the camera. Because by default, the camera's not set up to take the best quality JPEG. 
Uh, and for me, you know, I like to get the picture right in camera as much as I can because I hate going into workspace or Lightroom or what have you. Uh, so, but I want to get the best JPEG image I can out of the camera. So the way you do that is you go into the menu and in this case it's in menu G here and it's the very first thing here. So we go in here and you can see we have four uh, different settings that I'll show you in the super control panel. But let's go ahead and change this to super fine, super fine, super fine, super fine. So now I've set every mode of JPEG into super fine. So if we go into the super control panel, you'll now see that this says large super fine medium super fine, small super fine, and then large super fine plus raw, and that's how I normally shoot. Now the next thing I want to show you is the live control panel, and that's different from the super control panel, uh, because the live control panel also gives you access to the movie settings when you're in aperture priority mode, for example. Because a lot of times when you just push the record button on the M10 Mark II, you're not sure what mode or movie mode you're in. Uh, but you can look down here on the side and it says uh, Full HD Super Fine 60p. But to change that, you have to rotate all the way into the movie mode and then record this way and change the settings that way. Uh, but if you want to do this while you're in aperture priority mode, all you have to do is turn on the live control panel. So let me show you how to do that. You just go into Menu D, scroll down to Control Settings, and then go to PASM, and then click Live Control On. Now when I hit the OK button, we go into the Super Control Panel, but I can go to the Live Control Panel, and I have all of the same things I have in the Super Control Panel, but I also have access to the Movie Settings. So I can change this now if I click the info button to 30p if I want. So if you want access to the movie settings or the microphone settings, those are in the live control panel and not in the super control panel. And if you want to go back to the super control panel, you just click the info button. Oops, well get, get out of the movie settings. Go to, go to a setting that doesn't ask you to hit an info button to change. But here you can see I can toggle back and forth now. The next thing I want to show you is the highlight and shadow feature of the camera because sometimes when you're taking a picture outdoors, you know, the, the sky might be blown out or the shadows might be crushed and grainy and really messy. And you want to be able to kind of pick your battles, right? Say, oh, well, I want the skies to be a little bit more, uh, you know, blue and not washed out. Or maybe you want to save the shadow areas because there's some nice fall colors or whatever in the shadows and you don't care about the sky because it's cloudy out anyway. So you can kind of get a feel for how the camera is going to treat highlights and shadows by turning on the highlight and shadow feature on the camera. So that's also in the display menu. So let's go into info settings, go down here to live view, click the right arrow, and I'm going to leave image only on. I'm going to turn off custom too. And we'll go into custom one and turn on highlight and shadow and level gauge. And now we're set. So now back on the live view, if I want to see what's been crushed totally black or what's getting blown out totally white, I just click the info button like so. And now I have my histogram, my level meters, but I also have the highlight and shadows. And if I want to, you know, this image is not really bright or dark enough to, to trigger the highlight and shadows, so I'm going to force it by dialing in some exposure compensation. So I had to go to a negative two. Now you see that the front of the lens is, is turning blue and the background has some blue in it. So that's telling me that the highlight or the shadows have been totally crushed to black. And if I dial in a minus three, you can see that 
the grip and the background has been crushed totally to black. And this is really handy when you're trying to do creative things. For example, when I was, I did some uh, flower photography where I can see everything was crushed totally to black using the highlight and shadow menu, um, or highlight and shadow feature. And then if I crank this up the other way, you can see that now the shadows have been brought up, but I've, you know, blown out the highlights on the pen off. But depending on the kind of picture you're taking, that may or may not matter. So this is really helpful, especially when you're trying to dial in some exposure compensation to get a certain creative effect, or you want to pick shadows over the highlights or vice versa. Now the next thing I want to show you is how to double your battery life. And according to the uh, SEPA ratings for this camera, the default sleep settings will give you uh, 320 shots according to the SEPA. And there's another mode though called quick sleep mode. And that according to SEPA will give you 750 shots. So in theory, it's supposed to double your battery life. But the problem is, it's not very straightforward how to use that feature. So I'm gonna show you. All right, so I'm gonna have to switch over to my Pen F because I've, I've dropped my EM10 Mark II one too many times and, and the EVF doesn't work properly anymore. And you need that to set up the quick sleep mode and you'll see what I mean. So what we need to do is set up the quick sleep mode. And it's all the way down here in the bottom here in the utility menu K. And we'll scroll down and you'll see quick sleep mode. That should be on by default, but if it's not, you can turn it on here. But if we go into the quick sleep menu, you'll see we have two settings here, three seconds, to turn off the backlit LCD, and we can change that up to eight seconds. And then the sleep mode, we can change to anywhere from three seconds up to one minute. There may be less feature or options in the EM10, but uh, I know it has three seconds. And I like to have these both set to three seconds so that the LCD will turn off and the camera will go to sleep exactly at three seconds. Uh, which is a lot faster than one minute and four hours, right? And I think that's how this uh, double SEPA rating is accomplished. Now, you'll notice that the camera doesn't just shut off, though, after three seconds, right? And it didn't do it the whole time I was using the EM10 Mark II. So, how do you uh, activate that? Well, you have to make sure that, and I believe it's in here, built-in EVF menu. You have to make sure that the built-in EVF auto switch is turned on, and it is by default, so we'll leave that alone. So all we need to do is hit the uh, viewfinder button here, and on the Pen F it's right here. On the EM10 Mark II, it's uh, here on the side, right here, Just, and normally that'll toggle between the front and back, but you'll notice that when I toggle this, the uh, super control panel shows up. And now the camera is in quick sleep mode, because you'll notice it goes to sleep right away, like after three seconds. So I can turn it back on by tapping the shutter button. It comes on, then after three seconds it'll shut off, or go back to sleep. And that's, that's how you use the quick sleep mode. So I have a few other very detailed videos on the Olympus cameras uh, for the EM10 Mark II and the Pen F, etc. Uh, one for a feature no one's talking about, the My Clips feature. Uh, also one on tweaking your histogram. One on using the uh, intervalometer and time lapse feature. Uh, so check those out. I've made a little playlist for you that you can check out right here.